What's up everyone? Welcome to Akuma Studies and today we are taking a look at the SKX family. So to start it off, we are starting at the very 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 beginning of Seiko uh, dive watches, the 62 MAS-10, the first dive watch in the history of Seiko. This was launched in 1965, 65, 150 meters water resistance, automatic with the 6217 movement. Recently, um, the re-edition came out uh, in 2017 and got announced at Baselworld and this one was 37 millimeters, which was large for a watch in the 70s. After this, we have the Seiko 6105, made from 1970 to 1977. It has 150, modern, 150 meters water resistance also, um, and they came in two variants. The turtle case, well a bunch of variants, excuse me, but they had the turtle case, the cushion case. And um, the six, six, the six one hundred five was uh, is the grandfather of um, what we understand today as the turtle, as the tuna, as all of those um, kind of prospects divers that kind of look similar to um, the SKX. The Seiko six one hundred five really, really um, is the grandfather of all those watches. It's the patriarch. It, has, it had the caliber 6105B and A, which is a 17 jewel automatic. And this watch was worn heavily in the Vietnam War. Um, I, j I forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, in, between the in between the 62 MAS-10 and the Seiko 6105, there was a generation of wristwatch, a dive watch that came out just in the middle between those two eras. So that was the Seiko 6159 and the Seiko 6125. And um, just letting you guys know, we're not going to go diving into the professional line, so the prospects line. We're going to take mostly look at the um, at the other watches. For example, the tuna. For example, the tuna. We're not going to take a look too deeply into the tuna, but a very very iconic wristwatch. Also, the Seiko six three zero nine, which again another very very iconic Seiko. And this is when we start to see. Um, into what we kind of see in, as the modern Seiko. So the 6309 and the Tuna took a lot from the Seiko 6105, especially with the case design. The Seiko 7002, which was launched in 1988, had a, had a smaller case, um, the smaller case that we, we see today in the SKX. Um, it was 42 millimeters, I believe, maybe 40, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But Aaron Dunlap has a Pepsi version. I'm sure a lot of you guys listening to this probably had them as kids. Maybe you are a vintage collector and you have a 702, but a very iconic Seiko diver. Um, this one it was 150 meters water resistant. The early versions had the caliber 702, and it was the first non professional diver that Seiko ever made to go past 200 millimeters. 200 meters, sorry, water resistance. And it was a very, very successful wristwatch due to the fact that. Bust, um, inexpensive, effective. Um, <clears throat> you know, when we look back that 7002 movement, you'll find examples of it that are still running to this day. And if you if you guys have owned the 7002, let me know what your experiences are with the wristwatch. You know, history when you got it, how did it hold up over time? Um, I'd love to hear uh, your experiences with the 7002. And now. We are onto the Seiko SKX. So once again, it was developed from the 702. Um, by developed, I mean it continued on that tradition of the smaller um, dive watch. It was released in 1996, two years before I was born, with the 7S26 movement. There are a huge variety of variants of the SKX, and this is just a few. The, the, o, the 007 and a lot of these are K&J, we're not going to get into that, which is made in Malaysia or made in Japan, we're not going to get into that once again. So there's the 007, the 009, the 013, the 011, the 171, the 173, the 175. There are many, many, many SKX variants. Um, some you can't find, some you can find, some are popular than others. I, uh, a lot of you guys probably know this, I have the 013. What's his name? I can't remember his name. A Scott's Watches. And I know him as Lee, so I'm trying to remember his YouTube name. Lee just got the 
009 and he's loving it. I encourage you guys to check out his review. It's, it's interesting to see, you know, it's always interesting to see people's first reactions to the SKX or the, or the SKX. Because for him, it was his first step forward into just modern, a modern, reliable wristwatch. He's a, more of a vintage guy, so yeah, he loves his SKX. The SKX is ISO certified, which is really quite impressive for a wristwatch that's two hundred dollars. So let's let me. I'll, I'll just read you off some of the certific what what ISO certified means, the kind of test they put it through. So it must be at least one hundred meters water persistent. That basically means, look, you can't just stamp on your watch and say that it's 100 meters water resistant, 200, whatever. It has to be 100 meters water resistant. We will test that. It needs to have a unidirectional bezel with at least five minutes, minute markings, and a pre-select marker to mark a specific minute marking. So I don't know exactly what that means. I don't dive. But to me, that just makes it seem like the bezel must work as a, a dive bezel. It also must have distinguishable, distinguish, distinguishable minute markers on the watch face. So that means loom. That means effective loom. It must be led. Oh, sorry, sorry. It just not that yet. Sorry. Clearly distinguishable minute markers means look. You better be able to read the watch easily. You know. Don't put you know Roman numerals and um, a milgau seconds hand for your minutes and hours. You know that that's not easily readable. It must be completely legible in darkness. Um, you know, those are some pretty basic specifications, but this is where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Magnetic resistance. Three expositions to direct magnetic field of 4,800 AM. Uh, after the tests where they directly freaking, basically just directly, it's, imagine, you know, an amp. Like, you put your watch in an amp for like 30 minutes, you know what I mean, three times or something. I don't know what 4,800 AM means per se um so i'll probably have to take a look into that uh, but my guess is is that it's within it's basically above grade of consumer electronics and if i'm wrong correct me please leave tell me what um the am measurement is for uh, magnetics or electrons or electricity or whatever and it, after that testing it must still be plus or minus 30 seconds after the testing so okay the watch functions after this or it, it better still be accurate. It it's also has to be shock resistant. So it's banged on with a plastic hammer at a specific, I think, what is it? I can't forget the exact measurement, but they bang it with a plastic hammer. Um, I don't know the PSI, but after that banging, like a few times, it still, must, it still has to be plus or minus one minute after the testing. It must be chemical resistant. So what that means is, you know, when you're in when you're in the ocean, the ocean has a bunch of salt water. That just, it's a rust magnet. Have you ever, you know, looked at ships and just old, old ships that aren't being kept very well? They just rust. You know what I mean? They just rust. So what they do is they get this chemical solution that kind of speeds up the rusting process. They set the watch in there for, I think, 24 hours, and they, they see, you know, how it's doing afterwards. Um, also, after that, they test the spring bars. So the spring bars, 45 pounds of pressure applied to each spring bar in opposite directions. And it has to have no damage to the attach point. I don't know about you guys, but I have had spring bars break. It is a pain. My little brother, uh, I gave him my Orient Mako. And he was playing basketball with the Orient Mako and the spring bar broke. Now, luckily, he had a NATO strap on, right? But if you're diving and you get in a fight with a shark... And you're in your watch, and you're wearing a rubber strap, and you're and you're, one of the one of the lugs breaks. You know, like, come on now, you, you're in a you're in a situation that's life or death. You know, you need to know how much air you have. You know, I don't know exactly all the specific, like you know what goes on in diving, but you have a certain amount of time when you're underwater. So you know, your watch has to stay on your wrist. And if it's a battery watch, it has to have the presence of the end of life indicator. If it's a battery watch, so that's not applicable to the SKX. But if you know the kinetic line, I believe, or they have like a like a battery indicator. If it's if it's a battery powered watch, it has to have that. So the SKX comes from a very rich heritage of of Seiko watches. Um, there, there's mainly I would say two lines. You have the professional line, which has all the prospects watches like. I would, and I would include the Grand Seiko dive watches in that. So, for example, the Marine Master, 
or the Prospects Diverse, any of those. And on the other hand, you have like the 702, you have the SKX, and the Tuna, and those kinds of wristwatches are kind of in the middle. Um, but Seiko, the SKX is definitely in the amateur line of divers from Seiko. So, you know, it's it's a $200 wristwatch, but you can ISO certified wristwatch, ton of heritage. So far, the 7S26 looks like it's holding up pretty well. It's been out since 1996. That's almost 20 years now. Um, it still has, a, I think the movement still has more time to prove, you know, how it holds up. Um, especially nowadays with all these modern electronics and, you know, I luckily, for, I mean, I guess kids don't go out as much anymore, but um, it'd be, I really want to see how the 7S26 performs over time. So I, my wristwatch is coming about about a year old now. You know, I, I want to know how this, how the watch holds up after one year, two year, three year, four year, five years as my beater watch, 10 years, 15 years, if it can go that far, right? Um, the 702. Once again, I'll, I want to hear your guys' um, experience with this experiences with the 702. How long have you had it? What kind of damages has it gone through? Have you ever had to fix it? How long has yours been ticking? No, I, I love the SKX uh, Mine Zero 13, and after seeing Lee, just he just loves the SKX, you know. So I just kind of felt like I was in the mood to study more about it, and I'm very, very happy I did. I learned a lot. Um, I would, I, if you guys are Seiko collectors or you guys are getting into vintage watches, I recommend you guys to take a look at vintage uh, Seiko dive watches. Um, I think Seiko 6105s go for about 1K if they're in like great, great condition. You can find like 6309s for maybe around like $500, I'd say. Uh, so, excuse me. Um, just take a look. I, I would don't take my word for word for Bond, but take a look at vintage Seiko, especially the divers. They're very, very, very cool. Um, they have a bunch of history. Um, some have served in war. Some have been on the wrist of divers. Some are just have just been might have just been your dad's watch. So that's why I love the SKX. And the, and the whole little family of the Seiko line, inexpensive. Uh, I think personally that the SKX competes with the Omega uh, Seamaster, the Rolex, the Mariner, because I'm not getting a, another dive watch ever again in my life, unless it's vintage. So uh, that's what the SKX did for me. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Once again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on 702. Also the SKX, obviously. Um, what are your guys' experiences? I'd love to hear. Thank you very, very much for watching, and a cool